This video is brought to you in association with Funded Today. Funded Today helps you get more pledges for your Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaign with professional video and design. Links are in the video description below. Thank you. Let's get on with the show. Talk funding deep dive. And we're back again with Maggie of Thinking Huts. And Maggie, this deep dive is really going to concentrate on the World Economic Forum, who have written an article on you guys. And, and I can now understand because in the main interview, you were saying that like you launched it last year, but really you sort of took it away again, basically because of all the drama that was happening in the United States. And really you're just relaunching this spring, February, really going into, into March. And I think it's really impressive that the World Economic Forum um, produced this article in February, February 19th. And the title was The World's First 3D Printed School is Taking Shape in Madagascar. Now, if there's any greater validation for, for your project and who you've got on board, which we'll look at in the, in the backstory part, is it's very impressive that you have the World Economic Forum doing um, a good article with you. And they also produced a great video. And we're going to look at that video now, really, to help us take a deep dive into your 3D printed school that is taking shape in Madagascar. It's okay, on with the show. So I'm just gonna go on the full screen here and I'm just gonna take it back to the start again. And I'm just gonna press play and put that on mute and press that play. And again, it's really emphasizing again, the modular aspect of the, of the school. So the first thing is I couldn't believe the build time, Maggie. Less than yeah. one week. It's definitely one of the largest benefits of 3D printing um, because there's a huge need for schools even beyond Madagascar. We so we can definitely scale it up. And this is definitely the biggest selling points for why we should leverage this technology to build it more, um, more schools in a very short amount of time. And really. That's so interesting because really, it, this really is a pilot project for a much bigger project is what I'm beginning to pick up now. Because like, it's like, once we get the first one done, um, then we'll get multiple ones built in rural Madagascar. You're building the first one, as you said, in the, in the, univer in the university grounds. You'll, you'll be testing everything out. You'll be assessing everything. You'll teething problems, et cetera, et cetera doing your first one in rural Madagascar, your second one, and then by about you've done your hundredth building in rural Madagascar, you might travel over the Indian Ocean and go into sub-Saharan Africa. Is that one, maybe one of the long-term goals of Thinking Hut? Yes, exactly. That is the larger vision here. We've already been contacted by other communities within the African continent and also India and Pakistan. So it's a global problem and people are really interested in using this solution to tackle their school problem as well. Oh, so it's not going eastward <laughs> towards Africa. You're actually going westward across the Indian Ocean to India and Pakistan as well. Yeah, it really could go across multiple continents. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. And is the roof and everything 3D printed, Maggie? Oh, just the walls are 3D printed because that's the largest part of the building that takes the most amount of time to typically build. But everything else will be locally sourced. That was really important to me that we would be supporting the economy and creating jobs. And again, this is, this is an amazing thing of the 3D printed concrete walls. And in time, we'll be using, um, so here it is come about the roofs. In time, the, the 3D printed walls will be, you'll be able to begin once you've developed your technology in partnership with all your partners, university partners, et cetera, building partners, architects, you'll be able to maybe even begin to use local sources for the walls. And you know, like already using the, the technology that you're, you're gonna use in this pilot project, you've really also completely reduced the carbon footprint by, by a considerable amount, of, amount. And here it is here, with roofs and cladding made from locally sourced material. So in Madagascar, what would that mean? So we're planning to do corrugated tin for the roof, and then we're gonna source the wood and everything else from local craftsmen. Very good. And then solar panels providing power. Fantastic. And I just love this. 
you can eat eat part of the building or well, the building can grow on <laughs> food, you know, it's great. And the combination, it's really flexibility and expand. There you go. There's the great, you can expand as necessary. And this is the university. How do you say that university name? Sienna Ranso. I said again? Sienna Ranso. Ranso Rosa. <laughs> and that's in, again, deep into Madagascar. Yes, the South Central region. And is that is that university, have they partnered with the university in Colorado or are they partnered with a university in the States or anything? No, they do not have a US partner. It's, um, I believe it's a part of a public university. Well, then we need to do another, write another shout out to our university in the States to really partner with this uh, university in Madagascar for, on this project. <laughs> And this is the material that's being mixed up here. And this is the this is the old style building. And then this is your style of building coming in here. And there's laptops and everything. That's we're going to get Elon Musk to get the laptops in. Yes, let's hope. <laughs> That's an amazing figure. Classes of more than 50 pupils are common in sub-Saharan countries. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Like, I mean, this, in one sense, the video is really speaking for itself then. I, I think it pretty much um, sums it up. I just think innovation doesn't really reach the people who need it um, since it's very much for revenue driven business. So I think that's where we hope to change things. But I think the most frustrating thing is just the funding because apps can get a ton of money, you know, but then people who make a lot of impact or have the potential to, they just don't get the same amount. Okay. Well, we'll certainly like, comment, and share this video <laughs> by the World Economic uh, uh, Forum on your Thinking Hut uh, project. Thank you very much, Maggie, from Thinking Hut, of doing this talk funding deep dive on your really impressive 3D printed school, which, as the World Economic Forum uh, report is saying, it's really taken shape in Madagascar. And just to remind everybody, this project is now live on GoFundMe, and all the links to the project will be in the video description below. Thank you so much, Maggie. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.